I had seen King Kong on TV as a kid, and I'd known about it, and I, and I had seen Son of Kong at the Ideal on the you know Saturday afternoon cinema, and Mighty Joe Young, which Willis O'Brien also worked on. So I, I mean, I knew King Kong phenomenon, but I really hadn't. I had no idea what it really was until 1970 when I was in Boston and we were putting the Orson Welles cinema together and one of the first pictures that everybody that sort of unanimously was W.C. Fields and King Kong and King Kong won and it was uh, it, the first time I saw it on the big screen I was astounded. I, it was jaw-dropping. You just have no idea how much scale means to moving image uh, until you've you've experienced the the difference between seeing something and thinking you've seen something on a on a small screen and realizing how much of it you missed when you look on the large screen when the when the huge scale and the and the uh, actual moving image is all around you and you're immersed in it uh, there's just n there's just no other way to to experience film and uh, you won't you won't understand King Kong un until you see it on a big screen King Kong has um, always had a really negative racist uh, aspect to it because of the use of, <laughs> I mean, a giant gorilla representing black men and Fay Ray is a white woman with blonde hair and as Noble Johnson <laughs> is made to say in gibberish, Hollywood Ooga Booga language. Wal Bisa poor Kong, which means white woman for Kong. <laughs> and they were made to dress in really cartoonish, outlandishly bizarre versions of what Hollywood thought <laughs> tribal people looked like and that was also very racist and in the original cut which has now been restored uh, to show King Kong stomping on the uh, native people on the, and the black people and crushing them into the ground and biting their heads off and stuff like that and um, it, it's it, it's 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 just really um, noticeable, and uh, you know it, it's um, something that is not very often mentioned when <laughs> when talking about monster movies or King Kong because they're they're really um, all about the same thing: protecting white women from black men. The the length of time it took to make the picture built up the uh, audience expectation for what they were going to see and the uh, press leaked all sorts of uh, lies <laughs> about what what he really looked like and that it was an actual giant ape and that uh, it, it was all done with miniatures and nobody really had the story and so it was quite a, a um, quite a, 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 a huge mystery and uh, an astounding, uh, well, it was the eighth wonder of the world. And that's what uh, the characters called it, that they had found the eighth wonder of the world, brought it back to civilization, and it uh, immediately tried to destroy civilization, which is what all of those uh, horror films are about is we've done something wrong to the universe or the earth and it's going to hit back and that's that's kind of what was happening in King Kong except that 
like they made it a Beauty and the Beast story, which, you know, the, that line that Beauty killed the Beast at the end um, is supposed to make everybody feel better, but in reality, it, people really wanted Kong to live. People were rooting for Kong. And it was when the first um, uh, it, it, monster picture to the last, people identify with the monster because the monster is, is being hounded and each person feels that, that inside themselves they are the monster and they, they feel sorry for the monster because, you know, they, how they, they know how they'd feel if they were being chased by people who wanted to kill them. <laughs> so, uh, and then King Kong had a lasting influence because then uh, 20 years later, the Japanese came out with their King Kong, which is Godzilla, and it, these films generate remakes and sequels galore. King Kong is the watershed for all those films about society bringing, uh, the, trying to tame the wild and having the wild go wild and refuse to be tamed. All subsequent horror films and, uh, and monster pictures were made on that principle.